What's happening? Sammy here with a bit of match reaction after Fulham's 3-0 win over Stoke at Craven Cottage. It's the day after we've let it sink in. Fulham top of the league, just about on goal difference after a, a brilliant performance at, at Craven Cottage. So thought it was only right to uh, hop on the YouTube and, and, and do a bit of reaction because... Yeah, a wonderful, wonderful game for all of us there yesterday in in attendance. And, and we said beforehand, Peter Rutzler said it on the podcast that we did on Thursday, that this was the true litmus test for Fulham to see how far we progressed, to see how good this Marco Silva team is. And well, passed well and truly with flying colours, came out of the blocks brilliantly. Another early goal, second time in five games that we scored in the opening five minutes. We scored in every first half of every game so far this season. And I think that's the way that we're going to see it this season. Try and hit teams with a blistering start. And, and even once we were 1-0 up, you just kind of felt that Fulham were never really in danger of, of not seeing out this football match, which is astonishing, really, even though you know Parker did have a reasonably good record when we went in front it was so often fraught and tense and nervy and, and teams had you know, buckets of chances to get the equaliser. And obviously sometimes they did. This Marco Silva team is just just streets above, I think, what whatever Parker built before. I, I mean, it's early days yet, but I don't know if Slavisa's side would, would, would live with what we're seeing at the moment. As I said, it's early days. I think it's maybe a bit too soon to make comparisons to, to that astonishing team that we saw under Jokanovic in 17-18. But you know, some people are even going back and saying, could this be a team to rival to Garner's Fulham? And, and, and that's about as high a praise as you can get. And I don't think we're there yet, but still the, the early signs are, are so promising. Stoke just... Are a, are a good team. They've got a good defence. They've got a strong midfield. I thought maybe, and I've seen a lot of Stoke fans saying that Sam Klukas didn't have the best game and maybe Romain Sawyers would have been a better fit for them. He did seem to give them a bit of solidity when he came on, but I don't think that would have made the difference yesterday. Um, a wonderful opener, um, brilliant layoff from Mitrovic. Good finish by Wilson as well. Great to see him kind of burst back into the team with yet yeah, a wonderful kind of running finish really to, to get the first and I guess maybe if there was one criticism of yesterday's game is that it was one nil at half time. And, and really by that point, we should have been, it should have been dead and buried. And I was certainly nervous at half time. I could see another Middlesbrough performance maybe coming in where Stoke got an opportunity on the break and, and hit us and nicked an undeserved one or draw because Fulham didn't take their chances. But I'd love to have known what Marcus Silva said at halftime. I would I would guess it was along those lines of let's not let this become another Middlesbrough. Let's kill this game off early second half and then we can kind of coast for the rest of it. And, and look, that's exactly what happened. Uh, lovely turn from Mitrovic in the box for the second. Uh, I heard Stoke fans are very wound up because there was apparently a um, stonewall throw-in that was given the wrong way just moments before. Um, that second goal, I must admit, I haven't gone back and seen it, but they were adamant. The Stoke fans I spoke to afterwards, I don't think they were saying that that was the reason that it shouldn't, the goal shouldn't have stood, but I think they were annoyed about it um, in the Stoke end. But yeah, lovely turn from Mitrovic. Unlucky that he didn't score, but Bobby Decker Dover Reed just coming in late and, and managing to, to stick it past Bursic, who had a great game for Stoke. And, and the third was a nice goal as well. Bobby Decker Dover Reed, the architect. You know, I like that we're varying up the crosses that's something that's really positive as well yes it's great to get to the byline but also you don't always need to go to the byline you know stick an in swinger in from time to time keep the defenses guessing and that's exactly what bobby did and, and when you get those in swingers right it's a nightmare for, for the defense and goalkeeper they didn't know whether to come wilson managed to get onto the end of it did bravely did well um to get contact and it rolled across the box to mitrovic who, who was there johnny on the spot Four and four for Mitro. I don't think he's got our second gear and he's scored four goals in four games. And well, I actually haven't checked, but if he's not top of the championship goal scorer list, then he must be in the top three. And, and I just don't think we've even got close to, to the Mitrovic we know. Yeah, he's playing well, but I, I think there's still so much more to give. But he is a cheat code at this level. And, and I think we're seeing that now, the fact that he's managed to just score in every game, despite kind of pulling in seven out of 10 performances, really, for me. I think there's still much more that he can give. Um, but I am enjoying the fact that he's coming deeper. He's helping set up play. Carvalho just buzzes off him so well. And when you've got um, the likes of Decadova, Reed Wilson, and then you had Cabano, Cavalero able to come off the bench as well. It was just a nightmare. And then actually it was Cabano that 
got the penalty, won the penalty. I thought it was actually very slow from the Stoke goalkeeper Bursic to come out. It was took an age, really. You kind of it was all a bit in slow motion, really, how that penalty got given. And that was maybe the other blemish on the game. Was so obviously Mitrovic missing that penalty. Um, we know our penalty problems for, from last year. Hopefully, this is just a one-off, and, and this isn't the start of another Fulham team that can't seem to score penalties. We do just seem to have a curse from the spot. I think there's probably a, a, a debate, a reasonable debate as to whether Mitrovic should be the penalty taker anymore. He's had an awful lot of opportunities. He had all those problems last year with, with taking pens. He just doesn't seem to be that reliable from the spot. And I mean, it would have been interesting to see if Wilson had been on the pitch, whether Harry Wilson gets to take the pens. Um, he's clearly a set piece taker. He's tend- taken penalties in the past he would be probably my choice for for penalty taker. I still think Bobby Deckard over Reed is also uh, a fantastic penalty taker. I don't believe he was on the pitch at the time either. So I, I think Mitrovic was the clear option um, and it didn't cost us. Look, if that was nil-nil in the final minute and he misses that, then then it's a lot more serious and, and, and it's a debate for another time. But we were three nil up and maybe you can put the context into it. And, and and worry about that later down the line when there are more serious penalties in bigger moments, in bigger matches. Um, it was a good save from Persic, who, a young keeper, came from AFC Wimbledon, signed for Stoke, um, and, and he really looks the business uh, in goal for Stoke. And he did well yesterday just to keep it at 3-0. And that's how the scoreline stayed. It was a good penalty save. And, and, and we move on. International break, I feel like it's come at a bit of a bad time for us feel like we're really on a roll now and uh certainly i think a two-week break kills the momentum a little bit but i'm I'm sure the boys can you know have a well-earned break apart from those that are going on international duty and 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 kick on in september and and just show that this wasn't a one month flash in the pan i don't think we will you look at the matches that we've got coming up in september you've got a newly promoted blackpool team it will be a tough trip i don't think um Blackpool or any mugs um, but also I think it's a winnable game uh, a, a reasonably tough trip to a, a Birmingham side who who are looking quite strong this season obviously won 5-0 at Luton only a week ago and we, we played them in midweek in the cup but hard to tell anything from that because it was a weakened team for both sides and, and then Reading at home who are in free fall a bit at the moment lost 4-0 to, to Huddersfield so you, you look at those games and I mean, I'd expect seven points at a minimum, really, um, looking at the quality of this side. But it's cl- no team goes undefeated in the championship. There have been some amazing championship teams down the years and and none go undefeated. We will slip up at some point. And I think that's fine. Um, Peter did the maths on one of our podcasts saying you can afford to drop points in about 15 games, really, and still get top two. I mean, Fulham are, are more than on course for that with, with four wins for, from the opening five and the, and the fifth being a draw. So we'll have to cross those bridges when we come to it, but I'm hoping we can keep the good form going and keep this unbeaten run going for for as long as possible and keep the winning run going. Because I think if we can open up a gap between ourselves and, and that chasing pack, it looks like West Brom w- will match us toe to toe for toe for, for a while. But I do honestly think that Fulham have enough quality to go and win this division. Uh, and it'll be see- interesting when we do face those bigger teams, your Bournemouth, your West Broms, even Sheffield United to a point, despite where they are later in the season, how we match up. But for now, we've got to take the positives and and there really are only positives. There are so few negatives and, and I can't remember a time supporting Fulham when that was the case. So um, let us know in the comments uh, what you thought of yesterday's game. Uh, if you thought there was any areas that Fulham need to improve um, going into September, or if you just want to lavish the team with praise, then um, then go for it. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Two week international break, and we go again against Blackpool in a couple of weeks. Uh, podcast uh, coming out in, in a few days as well for a bit more reaction to the Stoke game. So come on, you whites.